morning guys welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic obscure or otherwise strange content today it's Saturday morning which means we're doing another Saturday morning cartoons episode you guys really liked the first one last week I will link it we're gonna just continue this I think this will be a weekly thing now this week we're talking about a cartoon that I got a ton of requests from you guys to do uh, on last week's video uh, and that's Mummies Alive it was a 97 98 cartoon that I never watched but I'm really sad I didn't because in watching the first episode that we're gonna be talking about today I would have loved this as a kid. I was really into mummies at that time. I kind of still am but everybody was into mummies at that time and yeah I would have loved this cartoon. Let's just get into it. Again we're talking about the first episode called Ra 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 Ra. <laughs> So we start with a flashback to a bunch of archaeologists opening up this mummy's tomb. There is a seal on this tomb. Perhaps it is best we do not- And like every single mummy thing, there's always like more rational people that are like, please don't. Just let's, let's not. Let's do something else. Open it. And then there's just like a douchey white guy that's just like, let's open it up. Let's do it. What could go wrong? <laughs> I love that he isn't operating any of the machinery and yet he, the door comes down and he's just like, I've done it. Do not go in, it is cursed. You said whatever's in there hasn't been able to hurt anyone for 3,500 years. I don't think it's going to start now. That's not how curses work, you dumbass. These aren't hieroglyphs, more like someone counting. Yusuf? <gasps> At last. You should have listened. Now you get eaten by a mummy. Well, I guess mummies don't eat people. Moving on. So now we're in present day, and by present day, I mean the late 90s. I'm dressed accordingly. I hope you are too. Cool. I'm gonna have a car just like that someday. I mean, what was it? Like 97? You're gonna go into a pretty competitive workforce and stock market crash and... There's this whole COVID thing now that you don't even want to know about. I, I hope you're right though. I hope you get that car. I hope the millennial experience is better for him than it is for the rest of us. This is our main character, Presley. He is skateboarding with his friend. Excuse me! <laughs> Poor lady, she had her groceries. Cool Sphinx. The tomb of Pharaoh's son with his mommy missing. So Presley's mom works at the museum, Egyptian History Museum. He goes in to borrow money to get soda out of the machine uh, while his mom is on the phone talking about how the museum doesn't have any money. We just can't afford to book your exhibit. Which I know it's not the museum's money that he's asking to borrow, but it is probably poor timing on his part, but she's cool with it, so maybe not. Yes, we can go. Of course, the Harris Stone. I like how she's still waving to him as the door is already like closed. So as he's getting a soda from this ominous looking cafeteria, he hears whispering. <gasps> Walter, buddy, that you? Is that you, Walter? He follows it down into the Ramses exhibit. <laughs> Oh shit. Goodbye, I think you better turn around, Presley. I'm getting a bad feeling. Okay, I'm out of here. Hey, he took my advice. Although it's probably a little late for that. The mummified remains of a cat, believed to be Prince Rapsi's pet. Aww, poor little guy. I don't like to think about a deceased cat either. I don't even like cats. Why am I upset? You don't like cats. Me and all of my cats and my foster cats are offended. So these statues come to life. They start chasing him. He tries to get help from a guard, but uh-oh, the guard is also possessed. So he keeps running until he gets to the sarcophagus. Yeah, I wouldn't really pick a dead body holder as a place to hide safely, but whatever works for you. Oh, it's not working for him so well, is it? Don't you recognize me? Were you my old gym teacher? Your father entombed me 3,500 years ago. Oh, you must need a different kid, dude. With the strength of Rome! But then these four cool mummies come to life and just like start kicking ass with their super mummy powers. It's awesome. <laughs> 
This soundtrack is absolutely everything I want out of a 90s kids cartoon, isn't it? And he said he doesn't like cats. Doesn't he feel silly now? So the bad guy just tries to fly away with Presley and then one of the good guys shoots a flaming bow and arrow and saves his life. You are safe. Good to know, thank you. The boy is mine. Not while we are here. I know that's like meant to be really cool, like we're the good guys and we're gonna protect this kid sentiment, but doesn't it just kind of sound like there's a window of opportunity where they won't be there, where the guy can come back and try to kidnap the kid again. I guess you're the good guys, but we gotta get out of here. The sacred cat will go first. <laughs> Careful with the kitty. So this cat just gets yeeted and they use his bandaging, bandaging, that's a word, to just climb out of the exhibit room. So even these four mummies and the cat apparently think that this kid is some kind of pharaoh. They do not see us. You are safe now. We have obeyed the command of Pharaoh. They tell him that they're supposed to protect him because of that, and they have limited magical powers that let them do so. The magic that gives us strength is limited. When it wanes, we must rest in our sarcophagi to renew it. Kind of like my mom's cell phone. I, I mean, I guess, yeah, kind of like a cell phone. I was going to argue with his logic, but I can't. What is a cell phone? Uh, you I wouldn't understand. Do you know what a cell phone is? How does he know what a cell phone is? So he takes the mummies back to his house and he's being formally introduced to all of them. And he is Nefer. You mean she. And then he's like, wait a minute. That one mummy's a girl. No, no, <laughs> no not just a boy. How boy. would you know? No. And the other mummies are like, no. No, that can't be. A actually, the prince is right. And the mummy's like, no, yeah, I totally am a girl, which I don't know how they didn't see that coming. She's totally a girl. I only pretended to be a man, since women are not allowed to drive the chariots of the pharaoh. You go, girl. Good for you. So fun fact that I just now realized, Nefertina is voiced by Cree Summer, who is a really, really talented and really underrated voice actress who voiced cartoons all throughout the 90s especially. I didn't even know who she was. I didn't even realize how many different characters were voiced by her until my friend Nicole did a post about her on her Instagram, which I will link because this lady deserves more credit. She's a phenomenal voice actor and she's just awesome. She's done so much for like representation in cartoons and she's just amazing. And I want everybody to know more about her. And I also want to shout out my friend, Nicole, because she's awesome. And you can follow her on YouTube at Harry on a Hook, and I will link her Instagram. Yeah. Meanwhile, his mom and the police are dealing with the carnage left over by the fight in the museum. Uh, and this guy shows up, and this guy is totally the bad guy, right? The safety of the treasures of Rapses. Got those vibes. <laughs> they must be sent back to Egypt. Tonight. But the exhibit just opened! So he wants to ship everything back to Egypt. Presley's mom is like, you can't do that, that's bullshit. And then he just like, pays off her boss to side with him. Which is such a shitty rich person thing to do, isn't it? The so Presley's chilling with the mummies, they're eating leftovers, they're vibing. It's mom, you guys gotta hide! And then his mom shows up and he has to do that thing that we all had to do at one point where we hide four reanimated, well five reanimated if you count the cat, mummies in our bedroom so that our mom doesn't find out and ground us. Kid stuff. On your knees! They see a TV for the first time. It's a big moment for them. Uh oh. Aww, the kitty likes her. That's so cute. Somebody stole the mummies from the Rapsies exhibit. Now Mr. Stone wants us to pack up the whole thing and ship it back to Egypt. Oh no. How did she not see like a wrapped up cat tail behind his back? It was very obvious. <laughs> the tiny man inside the spirit box won't threaten you anymore. Great. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> so he takes them back to the museum. They don't want to go back to Egypt. The sarcophagus of Rapses was brought here to lure you into the open, like a hunter staking out a goat to draw the hungry lion. Interesting way to put that, but all right. So they need to chase down the moving truck that has all of the uh, exhibit stuff with their sarcophagus, sarcophagi, all their assorted mummy belongings in there. And so the mummy suggests stealing the scary boss's car 
and uh, Presley's like, we can't do that. And the mummy, the one mummy's like, oh yes we can, and just like hot wires the car with magic, which is super cool. <laughs> Oh dear God, don't hit the kid. Wait a minute, why is a kid playing outside of a museum on the side of the road in the middle of the night by himself? What the hell? <laughs> so driving isn't her strong suit, but it's fine. She's actually doing pretty well for somebody who's really never seen a car before. Meanwhile, the bad guy's talking to his snake. But not for long. <laughs> I don't, I don't like snakes. He and his minions stop the truck and try to destroy it, but Presley stops them. With the strength of Hell yeah, those mummies are so badass. Let's kick tut! Let's kick tut. That's such a great catchphrase. Not if you're tut, but, you know. <laughs> There's some more super cool mummy fight scenes. They're fighting on top of a moving truck, which totally reminds me, wasn't that part of the Indiana Jones Lego game? Off topic, but anyway. <laughs> Yay! Always be sure to wear a seatbelt. Oh God, be careful. <laughs> Jacquel has saved you for the last time. I don't think so. Nice. So they save the exhibit stuff. They ditch the bad guy, but he's pissed off. I will destroy those mummies, even if I must shatter the world to do it. They drop him off and tell him that they'll be close by, and then that's the end of the episode. Hang on though. I still don't, like, know much of the lore at all. I didn't learn that much from the first episode. I've only been recording for like half an hour. Do I have time to watch another episode? I think I do. I've never done this before. I've never watched this episode before right now. Usually everything I talk about I've seen at least once before I record, but yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's watch this next episode. <laughs> episode number two in season one is called Pack to the Future, apparently. You took my son's life. Now his spirit wanders without rest, waiting to be reborn. Okay, so apparently back in the day, the bad guy killed Prince Ramses and his father. The king locked him in a sarcophagus alive. At least when I'm in my tomb, I'll be dead. Seal the jackal in his <gasps> den. Very bad luck for him, but also don't kill people. <laughs> He wakes up screaming from this dream where he's like reliving it all. Why does he look like Buff Squidward a little bit? Over 3,000 years without the sun. No wonder you've got such a lousy ten. Damn, the snake's just flaming him. <laughs> <coughs> Quiet, let me think. How dare you cough while I'm trying to think. Breathe better, snake. Then must Pharaoh speak the words that bring everlasting life. What does that mean? It doesn't matter. I think it matters a little bit, right? <laughs> so Presley wakes up, his mom yells at him to do something about the dog that's digging up her flowers, I guess. And then she sees the amulet and she's like, hey, this looks like the one from the museum. We have one just like it at the Rapsies exhibit. Where did you get it? The Ramses exhibit. Uh, I uh, met some Egyptians. Uh, yeah, they gave it to me. Egyptians? Nice cover, Presley. What's up? It's as quiet as a tomb in here. Uh, because <laughs> it's a, it's a tomb. <laughs> hey, it looks like another nice day tomorrow, but watch out for that early morning fog. Magic box can see the future. So the mummies are partaking in this newfangled technology called weather reports and they hear about an eclipse. Another man on the box said Apophis will soon swallow the disk of the sun and Ra will hide his face. And uh, that sounds really cool to me and you maybe, but to them, they're like, uh-uh. When Ra the sun god hides his face, bad shit goes down. Terrible things happen when Ra hides his face. So now I'm worried. We'll watch your house, follow you to school, protect you. No way! Yeah, I know you guys are trying to help, but following the kid to school feels like you're crossing a boundary. Hero, sacred kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> I like the thought that cats are still assholes even in the afterlife. I love cats. The Eye of Horus will let us see what Gotti sees. Is it wise to give such power to a cat? Yeah. 
I love my cats, but I also don't trust them. You know what I mean? Anyway, they use the Eye of Horus so that they can see what the cat's seeing, and then they send the cat to follow Presley and his mom on their trip to Yosemite. So the main bad guy is summoning some more new bad guys out of the water. Pharaoh's son is your prey. Is that Anubis? He's like the, the god of the underworld. Not a guy I want to be on the bad side of, you know? I'm not. I didn't summon you. What the hell is that? The devourer of souls followed me home one day, and now I can't get rid of him. Look at him. He's such a cute little devourer of souls, though. This should give you the scent. <laughs> I like how in unison they all grab the cloth, sniff it, and then howl at the moon. And then it just goes to the next scene. I hate working late. I never should have let Amanda go home. I never should have let my hardworking employee go home. Now I have to work. This job's starting to get to me. He's really chill about that, you know? Meanwhile, Presley and his mom are camping in the rain. This isn't so bad, Mom. <laughs> oh no, ah. Oh. I hate that for them. Also, they're being actively hunted by all of these guys. I hate that for them as well. I should have been there to protect you. It's not your fault, father. So, it looks like the pharaoh, like, Ramsey's dad, is, like, gonna be a character now. And also, Presley is, I guess, remembering who he actually is. It's okay to miss your dad, honey. If you wish you were camping with him instead of me, I, I understand. Oh, his poor mom. She's going through a lot, isn't she? Cotty is moving again. <laughs> Maybe she's hungry. Gross. It's okay. It's probably just a coyote. Mm, not a coyote. So with Presley and the cat in danger, the other mummies use their magical powers to locate Yosemite. Not how I pictured mummies using their magic, but whatever works for you. Run, Connie! The cat's name is Connie? How did I miss that in the first episode? What a cool name for a mummy cat. Hey, how's it going? So, the cat's name is Kati. I don't know why I thought they said Connie, because that doesn't make any sense for an Egyptian cat that's 3,500 years old. Apparently, I'm just a dumbass. <laughs> Some things never change. You used Connie as bait? How dare you? Man. The mummy has a cell phone? Badass. It's just like a telemarketing call. <laughs> just bring me Rapsies or I'll send you all to the pound. I feel like the pound's gonna have some questions if that's the case. Alright, so they're driving in their sick mummy car and the police stop them. Evil spirits from beyond the western gate pursue Prince Rapses. Yeah, right. If I had a nickel for every time I've heard that one. <laughs> Would you have more than one nickel? It doesn't sound like a pretty common excuse to me. A mummy! He just now noticed they were mummies? Patrol 12, do you need backup? Uh, negative. Uh, dispatch it, um... It, it was nothing. What? <laughs> That is the ugliest dog I've ever seen! Don't call him ugly, it'll hurt his feelings. <laughs> okay, maybe it's fair to hurt his feelings a little bit. <laughs> Connie! So Presley's about to go over a waterfall, and then Connie the cat saves him. Cats are awesome. Good kitty! Whoa, what the hell? Whoa. Whoa, that is super cool. Why didn't she do that before? Aw, oh, screw this guy. You asshole! So right when things are looking really bad for him, the the mummies just come in and and you know, using their really cool sarcophagus car, they just yeet the bad guy off the ledge. <laughs> the storehouse of Ra is empty. But then their car battery dies, and so they go to Plan B, which is hulking out in their mummy superpowers. Ah! 
I love the music and the mummy fighting. It's just so fun. <laughs> this is a rock. <laughs> this is a rock. I love this guy. He's my favorite. Did they just use the same cat screech twice? Back to back? Come on, guys. You had to know that was obvious. Prapsies. Oh god, don't let him fall. I mean, I know you're not because it's a kid show and there's like a lot of episodes left, but my anxiety. Ready, set, go! She's so cool. I love her. Man, I know it sucks for that guy to be killed or whatever you call destroying mummies like that, but what a cool way to be destroyed if it's gotta happen, you know? Well, this plan's really gone to the dogs. I feel like the writers were just up all night, just like high on caffeine and writing like all the dog puns they could possibly think of. You must stay by my side so I can watch over you like a father watches a son. I've already got a father. But I guess it wouldn't hurt to have a mummy for a daddy, too. Yay for mummy parents! How about a hike before breakfast? How can you be tired after such a good night's sleep? Poor kid. I mean, I don't sleep well, and I don't even have mummies coming after me in the middle of the night. You're blocking my light. That's it. The eclipse. It will be the end of Rapsis. Oh. I thought the eclipse was what just happened. Okay, well that's foreboding. All right, I guess it's time to end this video here. I'm running out of time and battery life and everything, but I really like this cartoon. Thank you guys. Thank you everybody who suggested this one because I really very much enjoyed it. There's cat fur floating all in the air. Oh my God. No, I really enjoyed this one. I didn't expect to cover two episodes today, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'll probably have to circle back and do some more videos on this since it's a continuous story and I'm genuinely curious now. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, anything and everything you do to support this channel. As I always say, it means everything to me. It's, it's so important to me. You know, I love that you guys love watching these videos and get something out of it. So thank you for being here as always. If you're new here, and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around because I post nonsense all the time and ring that bell because my upload schedule is as chaotic as I am. And remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so, because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. Bye.